I have a Rails application for placing a new order, and this accepts a credit card number. Now if I type in any random number into here, it's going to say it's an invalid card number because it does a check on the client side using JavaScript uh, with the mod 10 algorithm. However, if I enter a valid card number and then lose focus, the error message disappears. Now the JavaScript involved with this check is a little bit complicated, and it's a good idea to test this at a lower level like I show in episode 261. However, it's also a good idea to add one or two high-level tests to ensure that it fits in properly with your full application. So what I want to do here is add a request spec to make sure this is well integrated. Uh, now I already have our spec and capybara set up in my gem file, you can see here. And I also have a pending request spec for this order to validate the card number. Well, let me fill this block in to mimic the user's behavior. Now, if you aren't familiar with request specs or capybara, check out episode 257. So first I wanna visit the new order path, which will go to that form we were at. And then I wanna fill in the uh, credit card number field with an invalid number, let's say one, two, three, four. And then the page should have the content invalid card number. We'll see if that works. And when I run that spec, it fails. Now at this point, I would do some test-driven development to implement this functionality, but uh, it's already been implemented in this case, so it should be passing. The reason it's not is because request specs don't uh, execute any JavaScript by default, so I'll need to uh, tell it to uh, execute JavaScript in this case. Now Capybara integrates nicely with our spec. All we have to do is pass in a JS as true uh, flag into here. And now when we run our specs, it's going to execute the JavaScript using Selenium. So it's going to start up Firefox, you see here, uh, fill in the number and then close it out. And it looks like that spec is still failing. And I believe this is because we're listening to the blur event to do the check. And it seems that the Selenium driver just doesn't trigger the blur event when it fills in a field. Now there are some workarounds to get Selenium working in this kind of situation, but you may want to consider looking for a different JavaScript driver for Capybara because Selenium is a little bit slow and requires uh, that it's launch up Firefox and have a visual uh, window to perform the uh, JavaScript on. Well, this is where PhantomJS comes in. Uh, this will run a headless version of WebKit, which will allow us to test the JavaScript of our Rails application without opening a new window. There are many other things that PhantomJS can be used for, such as screen capturing, but in this episode, we'll use it for automated testing. Now you can download PhantomJS from the site, or if you're on Mac OS X, you can install it through Homebrew with the simple command brew install PhantomJS, and it's very fast. So this will give us the phantom JS command, which if we don't pass any arguments to it, will open up this little interactive console. Uh, we can do a console.log to print out a message. However, interacting with it further from here is a little bit cumbersome. So I'm just going to exit out of this and then we can actually create a script for it to run. Let's call this a uh, try phantom and we can either make this a JavaScript file or coffee script, which it supports. I'll use CoffeeScript here since that's my preference, and a common practice when you're interacting directly with PhantomJS is to call require web page and then call create on this, which will return a new page object. And I'll store that in a variable, and you can call open on this and pass it a URL. So let's say we'll do our local host, port 3000, to access our Rails app. And once this page is loaded in, it's going to trigger a callback function you can pass in. And this takes a status argument, which will be either success or failed. So in here, I'll just uh, log out that status for now, uh, printing the variable passed in, and then we need to tell PhantomJS to exit from the script. And then to run that script, we just have to pass that file into the PhantomJS command. So this will visit our Rails app in the background and tells us success. Now the real power comes in executing additional JavaScript there, which we can do by calling page.evaluate and then passing it a function. And this will be in the context of the page that we're currently on. So we can call document.title to get the content of that. And I'll set this to a variable here. And let's just print out that title. Now running that same phantom.js uh, script again, it tells us that the title of that page is orders, which is correct. Now there's a lot more you can do when using PhantomJS directly. Check out the API reference for details. But how do we use it as a driver for Capybara? To do this, we can use the excellent Poltergeist gem by John Layton. This gives us a Capybara driver for PhantomJS, just like we need. Setup is quite simple. Just go to the gem file and add in the Poltergeist gem there and run the bundle command. 
Next, go into the spec helper file if you're using RSpec and add in these couple lines provided in the readme. So now when we run our specs again, it's going to visit our Rails app in the background without displaying a window interface, and this time our test pass. It seems that Poltergeist does trigger the blur event when it fills in the field. So this is really great. We now have a convenient way to ensure that our JavaScript behavior is well integrated with our Rails application. Now I wouldn't use this to test any complex logic or edge cases. For that I recommend using Jasmine or something at a lower level like I show in episode 261. Well, now what if I want to try testing something a little more difficult? For example, I have this list of orders here, and this page contains some endless pagination like I show in episode 114. It's a little hard to see here since it's just on my local machine. So just so we can see it, I'll add a temporary sleep into this index action of one second. And now when I reload this page, and when I scroll down to the bottom, it's going to say fetching more orders until they finally come in from our Rails app. So how would I test this behavior at a high level with PhantomJS? Well, let's do that inside of our order spec again. I'll add a new it call, and let's say it uh, fetches more orders when scrolling to the bottom. And let's enable JavaScript on this. And first I'll create some orders. I'm displaying 10 on each page, so I'll make 11. And for each of these, I'll create a new order and set the order number to that. Uh, plus one since it starts at zero. And then when I visit the orders path, the page should have the content of the order number one. Now there's more to do here, but let's get this working first. When I run the specs for this, it fails saying it can't find the content order one. In fact, the page doesn't look like it contains any of the orders. So what's going on here? Now the issue is that each test is run in a separate database transaction. We can see that in the spec helper file, use transactional fixtures is set to true. The reason this doesn't work with PhantomJS is because that is run in a separate process which is going to use a separate database connection. So it's not going to share the same data as the uh, test suite. To get around this, we could set this value to false and then clear out the database in a different way, such as using the database cleaner gem, which I demonstrated in episode 257. There's an alternative solution presented by Jose Valim on the Platformatech blog. Uh, if you use this bit of code, it will share the database connection and active record across processes. So this means our Phantom JS will be using the same database records as our Rails tests. This will allow us to continue to use transactions for each test, which does provide a nice speed boost. So I'm going to place that bit of code into the support directory under the spec directory. Uh, let's call it sharedbconnection.rb and I'll just paste that code right in. This time when we run our specs, they pass because PhantomJS can see those database records. Now that we have this working, let's expand upon this test. First, I wanna make sure that our page does not include the order number 11 because that should only show up if they scroll down to the bottom of the page. We can handle that by calling evaluate script. This will end up executing this specific JavaScript on that page, so we can tell our window to scroll to a specific position, such as the document's height, which will be at the bottom of the page, and then we can make sure that the page should have the content of the order number 11. And when running our specs again, we can see that they still both pass, so it does look like our endless scrolling behavior is working. However, I don't really like it when the tests just stay green when I modify it. I want to make sure that this is really testing the proper thing. So if a test goes from green to green, I like to uh, just check the behavior by commenting out the actual implementation. This is what does the endless scrolling. And then make sure we do have a failing spec and looks like we do. So then I can just uncomment this again. And we're back in the green. Now, running these JavaScript specs can be a little slow. This took nearly three seconds, primarily to start up PhantomJS, but you may not want to run them every time. So here's a quick tip. You can call the rspec command directly to run the specs, and if you pass in the tag option and set a tilde JS, you can uh, skip the JS tag this way. Now, this didn't end up running any specs since they're all flagged with JavaScript in this application, but it's really handy in other applications. Well, thanks to PhantomJS, we're done testing the JavaScript integration for this application, and now that it's all set up, we can easily add more tests as we need new behavior. Now, Poltergeist isn't the only way to run PhantomJS. There are many other projects available depending on your test framework, several for Jasmine, and I covered Guard Jasmine in episode 261. You may want to check that out. It's a great way to run Jasmine tests. 
And that's all I have for this episode on Phantom JS. Thanks for watching.